This conference will now be recorded. So good morning, I'm Eddie Bolin, work with the City of Thomasville Fire Department, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about disaster preparedness and how it starts with you. Preparing is very simple. Action steps to preparedness include get informed. Be informed of local media so that you know what's going on in your community. Make a plan. So have somewhere to go in the event of a disaster. Assemble a disaster and a go kit. Maintain your plan and kits, and then address individual specific needs or special needs that you may have. To get informed, the first thing you need to know is the different types of disasters that exist in our area. Uh, for Thomasville, we face flooding almost on a regular basis when we have large rains. Hazardous material spills are uncommon, but can have disastrous effects. Fires from both wildland and home fires do exist in our community. Winter storms, disease outbreak, which we're currently facing right now with COVID-19. The potential for heat waves as the summer starts to come in, as well as tornadoes. So it's important to have a plan. So in order to make a plan, you want to decide whether you're going to make one for yourself, for your family, or for your workplace. If you're doing one for your personal, um, you can have one whether you're at work or whether you're at home. Uh, for your family, we want to plan for everyone in your household, and please don't forget your pets. As far as the workplace is concerned, it's important not only for you to be educated, but also educate your coworkers on disaster preparedness. So the first part about making a plan is to determine how long you may need to survive for. So for our plan, we recommend at least be able to be on your own for 72 hours. What that allows us to do as emergency workers is to prepare our community and take care of the existing emergency needs. Uh, while we're once we get that accomplished, then we can start focus on the less emergent needs. Know your evacuation routes if you were to leave the, your home in a hurry, how you would leave, and know the direction that you'd be going. Create a personal support network um, so that if you're not at home, someone might know where to reach you at. Plan for services to become unavailable. Your cell phone may not be available. Your home phone you may potentially lose uh, electricity, other types of essential services. And also identify your family contacts. And it's important to make sure that they know, um, your family knows that if I'm not at home, I would be at this place or another place so that they can um, help you know, locate you in an emergency. Inventory your home possessions. That can be done by simply walking through your home with a video camera um, to get an idea of where everything was at. And so that if there was a disaster that affected your home and you already left, you would have an idea of what your possessions actually were. And then also keep copies of important documents available. It would be good to know the basic first aid and CPR skills. Also learn how to use a fire extinguisher. Learn how to take shelter in place and what that might mean for your home. And also learn where your evacuation notices come from. And so for us, you know, the question becomes where do our evacuation notices come from? In Thomasville, we have a system called Nixle. Nixle is an emergency notification system which pushes emergency messages out to the community by cell phone, text message, uh, voice phone calls to residential homes. And it also integrates with the wireless emergency alert system, which allows us to geotarget a certain area in our community and push a message, much like Amber Alerts come through your radio, your TV, and your telephone. We have those capabilities as well through Nixel. Also, tune to your local radio for emergency information, uh, television, and then we also have Reverse 911. Reverse 911 calls your individual home phone line and might leave a voice recorded message or speak to you voice recorded and tell you what issues we may be facing for um, that particular event. So we talked about planning for pets and your service animals. You need to know the laws regarding pets and service animals and shelters. Not all shelters are pet friendly. So before packing your pets up and taking them to a shelter, make sure that you're going to a pet friendly shelter. Plan for an alternative safe location for your pets if you're not able to take them with you. Prepare a disaster kit and a carrier if applicable for your pet. 
You want to make sure your pets and service animals are properly identified. Have a tag on them in case you become separated. Make copies of the vaccination and shot history. They'll want to see that at a pet friendly shelter, as well as keep recent photos of you and your pet with your plan and your kit to help identify and connect you two together. Some of the things that you'll want to have on a disaster kit is number one, make sure it's easily accessible in your home or office. Uh, water, we recommend having a water supply for everyone in your household for at least 72 hours. Non-perishable food for everyone in the household for at least 72 hours. And that might mean canned food or other items that won't expire if they're not in the refrigerator. And so you could have a, um, if you have canned food, you want to make sure you have the pop top or you have a manual can opener. So that if you lose electricity, you'll still be able to open your cans. Have games and books available for your children. Copies of personal documents that are important to you. A uh, battery operated or a hand crank radio. Flashlights or flameless candles would be good in case you lose electricity. Extra batteries for those flashlights. Over the counter medicines, a first aid kit, a change of clothes for members of the family, blankets, an emergency whistle, hand sanitizer and personal hygiene items, plastic sheeting and duct tape for sheltering in place. So that you can, you know, keep the uh, ventilation system from pulling air from the outside if it was a hazmat chemical spill and you're asked to stay in your home. And then lastly, have cash available. Some other items that might be important um, is uh, having a go kit. So a go kit would be something you just grab and you take uh, to an evacuation center or a shelter. Uh, water, non-perishable snack items. Again, games and books for children. Pen, pencil, and paper. Again, a copy of those important documents, make sure you've got those available. Hygiene items, first aid kit, over-the-counter medications and prescriptions, battery-operated flashlight and radio, extra batteries, a clean change of clothes for family members, bedding, which might include a sleeping bag, a pillow, a blanket, cash, or other reasonable items that you may feel comfortable taking in a shelter. So maintaining your plan and your kit. So again, practice this, practice, uh, um, knowing where your kit is stored so that you can easily access it. Keep the information updated on a regular basis. Change items out in your kit every six months. Let your item or outside contacts know where you keep your kit and what your plan is in the event of a disaster. Include your neighbors in the plan. Tell your neighbors where you will be and where you can be reached if you weren't at home. So some specific populations have uh, specific challenges. Visually impaired folks, um, there are some special, special things that you may want to take into consideration. Keep an extra mobility cane in the disaster kit. Keep an extra cane in strategic locations at your home, work, or school might help. Know your rights in terms of service animals. Have written instructions on how to care for service animals. Prepare a disaster and go kit for the service animal. Include all forms of identification. Pre-label emergency plies with braille, large print, or highly colored tape. Prepare for being without auditory cues. Organize medications so that they can be easily packed. Keep any assistive devices readily available. Prepare a written description of how to use assistive devices. Know how to verify credibility of emergency responders. Be familiar with transportation routes around your home and neighborhood, as well as know your emergency exit routes of buildings you're in. Some specific populations include children and teens. We wanna encourage families to develop and practice the emergency plan together. Know where you will meet your family if a disaster occurs when you're not at home. Designate and know phone numbers of a family member outside of the area where you can check in in case you're separated from your family. Create a list of medications or other items to which you may be allergic. Follow instructions of emergency response officials and don't be afraid to ask questions. For those folks that are hearing impaired, we'd like you to store extra batteries of your hearing aid, portable TTY machines, laptops or other communication devices, have battery operated television, know which media outlets provide captioned emergency information, Create a list of pre-printed statements and explanations describing your condition and needs and how you prefer to communicate. Keep pen and paper in an emergency kit for writing notes.
folks that are medically fragile, keep list of your medical condition status with you at all times. Have a list of medications and instructions for their use. Know how you will keep your medications refrigerated. Have a plan for what to do if your home health caregivers cannot get to you. Have handwritten operated instructions for all equipment. Have extra batteries, oxygen, catheters, et cetera, that might be needed. Have backup power supplies for any equipment. Inform utility providers of any life support equipment that you have that you rely on electricity. Know locations of facilities that can support your life-sustaining needs. Notify a local fire station of your condition and needs. Special population considerations for seniors include consider personal needs and assistive devices such as eyeglasses, hearing aids, or other life-supporting devices. Have ample layers of clothing in disaster and go kits to remain warm. Keep copies of pre-printed messages with you that explain your needs, how best to communicate with you, and other important information about yourself. And so lastly, for more information from Thomasville Fire Department or the City of Thomasville, you can go to our website listed at www.thomasville-nc.gov. FEMA has information at fema.gov. There's also prepare.org, ready.gov, cdc.gov, and redcross.org. Uh, we ask that, especially in this time with COVID-19, that you get your information only from official sources so that you can have accurate, up-to-date information. Thank you for being with us today and hope you have a great day.